the royal family of Carthage have long passed down their plan to bring down the Roman Empire. Generation to generation it has been passed, and it was Hanno who decided to be the one to carry it through. Starting off in Sicily, his plan was to regroup with Theophanes in Spain, push through into Gaul, cross the Alps, and blitz into Rome from the north. Meanwhile, his second army conquers Sicily and lands in southern Rome, pulling the Italians down south and destroying them from both fronts. Now ready to cross the Alps, will Hanno and his two eldest children be able to bring down the Roman Empire, or will it all fail? After hearing rumours that the settlement of Massilia was very weak and unguarded, he decided to make the attack. The Carthaginian fleet got caught off guard by the Romans and was forced back. Now with half of the Carthaginian army stuck in Sicily with no way out, all of a sudden the situation became dire. It was on that same day that Captain Admetos in Corduba met the Spanish again. His plan was the same as the last, but he doubted whether it would work twice. The Spanish charged in and he immediately sent two troops out to go and flank them. Attempting to flank the Carthaginians were caught on the side. They had superior numbers but instantly broke at the threat. They were able to rally onto the plaza and the Spanish started breaking but Admetos doubted that it would be enough to force the Spanish out forever. His confidence soon changed when he realised the Spanish fled and it was only the general left. He charged all of his spearmen forwards came in contact hand on hand himself with a general. Fighting to the death, the Spanish general pulled out, refusing to fight any further. Admetos had won the battle, but he knew the Spanish would return. He quickly heard news of a Spanish army that had managed to flank around. He had to quickly charge his troops back to the plaza before they captured the settlement. His garrison weakened quickly, and his troops ran to try and save the day. They made it just in time to break the Spanish, and forced them back again. Suffering from exhaustion, his troops did not want to charge out. They were instead ordered backwards to the back of the plaza to let the Spanish come for them. The battle was won, but the people of Corduba had lost many men on both of these battles. The population would struggle for some time. A third attack Admetus knew they would not be so lucky. Hours after the Spanish had been confirmed defeated, Theophanes arrived with his army. He was instantly believed by the people of Corduba to be a coward. They believed him to have been hiding in the mountains waiting for the Spanish to, to be defeated before charging in himself. He was refused entry into the settlement and the people of Corduba named Admetos as their new leader. Of course still under Carthaginian rule, Admetos would govern the settlement. Meanwhile, Theophanes, realising that his reputation had been greatly tarnished, decided he needed to claim Spanish territory to regain his name. He instantly recruited a load of mercenaries and set off on conquest. Theophanes, about to cross the Spanish border, heard news that another Spanish army was arriving. He instantly set back to deal with them. No more news came in of his Spanish army, it had seemingly disappeared from sight, and yet a Gallic army was crossing the border towards Corduba. Theophanes decided to pull back to the bridge to hold it there. Close enough to rescue Carthago Nova if needed, but in a good position also to defend Corduba from the Gauls. Hanno laughed at the proposal brought to him by the Romans. A ceasefire for Sicily, a return to the borders. Clearly he knew from this that the Romans had no idea of his alpine army ready to barge down into Rome. He did, however, offer a counter proposal. He made the push to ask for Capua. His plan? This settlement here would be a vital strategic point. If he can get his troops there ready and get the timing perfect for his march on Rome from the north and the south, he could potentially do more damage to the Romans than he could have ever imagined. The deal was pushed, but the Romans declined. Negotiations ended, and so Hanno continued with his plan. As predicted, the Gauls did attack Theophanes on the bridge. 
Now this was his time to prove himself. The Gauls charged across the bridge. He ordered his troops into position as fast as they could. He knew he could destroy the Gauls here. All he needed was to control the bridge. The single crossing to Corduba. Missiles roared in and the Gauls dropped dead one by one. Ready to prove himself, Theophanes was willing to charge into the battle if it was called for. It instantly was, his front line broke, and so he charged, ordering his other cavalry squad with him. He charged in himself, getting the first kills of his life. He ordered in the mercenaries. Realising the battle was won, he immediately pulled out to safety. And the Gauls were chopped down as they fled. His missile troops had to stop firing out of fear of friendly fire. And then he charged in, cutting them all down. The Gauls learned a vital lesson this day. However, they learnt it brutally. Carthage had won the day, but Theophanes knew that another Spanish and Gallic army would come eventually. He needed to set an example and make sure every single one of them died. But only two Gauls remained. Those two went back to the city of Oscar and told the rest of the Gauls of what had happened that day. The Gauls were angry and vowed revenge on Theophanes. Hanno met little resistance at Massilla, but exterminated ne them nonetheless. Up north, Hanno got worried. He realised he had wasted far too much time on a pointless settlement that the Gauls were about to take from him instantly. He left two barbarian mercenaries behind to defend, and immediately set up north to cross the Alps. Never again would he waste time, he would say. The settlement was burnt to the ground, every building destroyed. The population? was forced to pay a cruel tax. The settlement would be abandoned to a rebellion in the hope that the Gauls will never get their hands on its riches. Meanwhile in Sicily a new army had been built and a navy as well. Theagres decided to board the ships and they crossed the borders into Italy. There they recruited some mercenaries Croton was in sight, but their spy had not yet arrived. They had no idea of a potential Roman army that could be hiding behind the mountains. Meanwhile in Spain, Theophanes, determined to prove himself, decided to duel the Spanish general to the death. Theophanes, the third eldest son of Carthage, third in line to the throne, versus the Spanish second in line to the throne, their faction heir, Ambon. The two will duel to the death. The victor will have peace signed in their favour. This was a risky move by Theophanes, but also by the Spanish. The two faced each other down, and then Theophanes decided to make the first move. He made it look as if he was about to gain the high ground, but then suddenly reacted turned around and charged for the Spanish whilst they least expected it. He charged into the side and the duel began. He fought to the death. The generals knew that one of them would face their end this day. Both were confident of victory. Out of nowhere the Spanish general decided to flee. Theophanes charged him down but it seemed like the Spanish were going to get away. It was an epic chase across the fields as the Carthaginians tried to reach the Spanish general, but they were too fast for Theophanes and his bodyguards. The Spanish general Amdon fled the battle. The Spanish dishonoured their original agreement. They refused to sign peace in Carthage's favour and the war continued. Theophanes, however, had a heroic victory by his name and was celebrated as a hero in Corduba. They welcomed him back again into the settlement. Theophanes the Coward was a name no longer spoken. Theophanes the Challenger was his new title. He quickly regrouped with his army 
and made a move onto the Spanish. The Spanish army attacked Theophanes. His army was weak, but he was determined to have another victory. He made sure he held the high ground and had his missile troops ready to fire down. His army was almost entirely made up of skirmishers. His infantry was certainly lacking. Theophanes began the attack with a charge onto their cavalry. His bodyguards dropped instantly. He immediately ordered his cavalry to pull back for it was cut down on the retreat. Theophanes had passed. His troops however knew what they had to do, they immediately charged in all the infantry onto the cavalry, trying to stop them before they cut down the slingers. The slingers were ordered to fire at the general. The Carthaginians however could do very little after the loss of their general, and eventually broke. Theophanes was dead. A messenger came to Hanno, the king of Carthage, and mentioned the name Theophanes. Hanno immediately passed it off with his hand, waved it away, uninterested to hear more. Theophanes is dead, said the messenger. He died a hero. Hanno heard the full story of what had happened, and wished he had given the man more troops. Word spread throughout the world that Iberia was undefended. The Spanish and the Gauls immediately put settlements under siege. Hanno got instantly worried and realised that he was about to lose a massive chunk of his empire. It was now or never with the crossing of the Alps. The spy Akvat scouted ahead and told the Carthaginian army that there was a Roman army coming down but it was too small to cause any real damage. Theagres and his, his brothers and cousins immediately charged and put Croton under siege. They would need to take it quick, make the push on Tarentum and force the Romans down south. The Romans countered attacked Theagres and came in with an army. Theagres instantly sent his soldiers to cut down the war dogs. The Roman legions moved forwards and so did his swordsmen. His timing had to be perfect if he was to break the Romans. The Carthaginian troops broke instantly on the sight of the Romans. The cavalry charged in to try and save the situation. The Roman general was knocked down. The cavalry made the move whilst they could, and the first Roman army was destroyed. Theagres was furious that his troops were breaking within seconds of the battle, but he would deal with those later. For now, he still had a battle to win. He ordered the light cavalry to chase after the Romans, stop them from fleeing back into the settlement. Meanwhile, his heavy cavalry reorganised themselves and prepared for the next push. The Romans were defeated, but the morale of the Carthaginian armies had been put to the test. It was clear that they could not stand up against a true Roman army. The population of Croton was exterminated to set an example to the rest of the Roman armies. Terror suddenly striked Theogrees' face as he saw a full stacked Roman army heading towards him. However, this was a plan to bring the Romans south to allow his father the king to push north. He had done everything he had to, and now he just had to fight for his own life. Hanno found himself being slowed down by a Gallic army. He attacked and forced them back. He had crossed through the Alps, but had not yet found any sight of the Romans. News had reached him that Theogrees had landed in the south, but he had no idea by this point whether he was dead or alive. Captain Xenophanes was put in charge of the siege of Austria. He had to defend against the Gallic army. He had learnt from the strategies of Admetos and decided to apply them here. He pulled all of his troops back to the plaza. He made sure that his phalanx was ready. He would rely on it in this battle. His army was ready and the Gauls approached. He was confident he could take out the war band, but the Gauls came with that heavy cavalry, led by a great general. 
The Gauls began with a charge into the phalanxes, a unit type they had never before seen. Their spearmen went into the cavalry, and they were constantly hit by javelins and rocks. The Gauls came unexpectedly from the back, and had to be dealt with by the missile units. Xenophanes ordered one unit of town militia out of the plaza to catch the Gauls on the flank. They lined up, and they charged, hoping to break the morale of the barbarians. However, that just did not seem to be enough. The Gauls held. This was definitely a different army to the Spanish. Xenophanes himself died, and the battle was quickly ended. He was given the title of a heroic death like all the troops that guard in the settlement. But still, it fell to the Gauls. After hearing of Carthage's weakness, an African tribe moved forwards, led by Theogrees. Captain Akbar had to defend with one spear unit. Captain Akbar decided to play sneaky. He hid his troops behind a Carthaginian building and waited for the missile troops to approach him. He charged out and the archer units were caught on the flank. He knew he would have to break them quickly as his morale would not hold. His Carthaginian troops had no confidence in the battle and any confidence they did had quickly collapsed when they saw they were being flanked. They were caught on the streets, cut down one by one and eventually broke. The city of Fortpus fell and was no longer here controlled by the Carthaginians. Baal did not favour Hanno in these few years. A volcano on Sicily outside of Messana had erupted, killing a load of the population. The gods were not smiling on Carthage. At the same time the spy reported that another Roman army was heading their way. Theogrees in Croton had to defend. His literally entire family was on the line. Hanno knew, knew he had to make a move now. He did not waste any time with Gauls and instantly set off. The Roman border was in sight. The Romans still had no idea of his presence. He had slipped through unseen and now had to push to Rome. So I hope you enjoyed part 2 of this new series, there's one more part left of this series, and yeah, then it'll be done, so final part should be up in about a week. And I just want to make it very clear, as there was a little bit of confusion last episode, this is not scripted, uh, this is just me making up as I go along and then I edit it. Um, in future I do plan on scripting things, so if things sound a bit weird now the right word might not have been used don't worry i'm working on it it will be fixed for the next series uh, but it's just the way how i recorded this one because it it wasn't meant to be this documentary style at first it was meant to be just a normal let's play with a little bit of a a little bit of documentary style but then it changed into something completely else uh, into something completely different after it was recorded that's why it might sound weird at times and finally I just want to say there's been a quick change to the schedule. Uh, because of university I'm... this is of course a very busy time for me. Uh, videos are now going to be one every two weeks, no sorry, uh, one every two days, one every two weeks that would completely destroy the channel, one every two days uh, rather than one every single day. So yeah it's, it's gonna be like three or four per week rather than seven a week. Uh, you know that's that's going to exist for two weeks, so you know, it's like 14 days, it'll be a little bit weird. It's not a big deal, I'm just saying it now in case if anyone was confused. Hopefully I don't lose all my subscribers in those two weeks. I, I, I can't see that I would, but, you know, just... I'm not going anywhere, I'll be back, as normal, sometime very early Jan... very early March. Hope you've enjoyed, hope to see you in the next one, the final, and goodbye.